pase, pierna derecha, directo al arco, golazo, golazo, golazo. The world of football with a soccer perspective. This is Soccer Today with Dwayne Mullins and Kevin Laramie, live on the Sports Podcasting Network. Good day, good night, welcome to Soccer Today for March 28th. 2018 joining us on the line as always Dwayne Rollins and today our brand new collaborator on the sports podcast network he will be part of our Canadian Premier League coverage and our brand new show available starting next week for Patreons only Keaton Robbins and if you are uh, a longtime listener of the network you remember Keaton was a collaborator on the NASL nightcap and Keaton had the itch and he called me earlier this week and I'm like Keaton I miss you too how about we talk about soccer? How you doing, Keaton? <laughs> Good, Kevin. Thanks for the intro. I, uh, you know, pumped to, to be joining you and Dwayne on uh, on this wild ride, and it's, uh, you know, the, the timing worked out great. And uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, the NESL is, uh, you know, no longer. It, it, it's in some kind of weird soccer purgatory, and um, I kind of felt like I was also in that place, and I needed to get out of there. the Canadian Premier League. Um, you know, is going to give uh, us a, a nice platform to to focus in and not some have so much wanderlust uh, with this American league and really focus in on a, a league that's our own. And I think a lot of the things that the NASL wasn't. A lot of fans were hoping it could be the Canadian Premier League will be that league that fans can uh, experience at a pure kind of um, proper football the NASL was trying to accomplish. So. Uh, I think the NASL nightcap would be a, a tough, uh, tough show to produce right now. There wouldn't be a lot. Of, we'd just be talking about lawsuits, really. It, it would be, honestly, doing the, it would literally be a nightcap. It would just be Teo and I like drinking one drink and then passing out, and then that's the show. <laughs> there, there you go. All right, uh, Keaton, uh, you, you sort of touched on a little bit um, for for my first question here. Um, talk a little bit about what you think the Canadian Premier League is going to give this country that it currently doesn't already have. Ooh. I don't want to say a heartbeat, but, uh, you know, as much as I think of like watershed moments in sports in this country, I think um, for me, uh, the Vancouver 2010 Olympics was a coming out party uh, for Canada and to the rest of the world, um, really to give us the confidence to, 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 to ourselves. Uh, you know, the world kind of knows who we are, but it was more or less to every Canadian to say, you know, I'm really proud to be a Canadian. I'm, I'm proud uh, to, to wear the Maple Leaf and, um, yeah, I was I had the honor of being in Vancouver that the whole month and a half. My aunt was out there and went to a bunch of events and just soaked it all in. You know, that was eight years ago now, and I really see a lot of parallels between uh, what that kind of moment was and what a 2026 can be. And uh, and so the Canadian Premier, like the sorry, 2026 uh, United that we're talking about, that like Canada as a part of being a. Um, I really think there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn, and it gets me excited with. Uh, the foundation the Canadian Premier League is putting down. It's not the pretty work, but it's, it's you're letting the brickwork the foundations right now. And eight years down the road for 2026, that's really where we're going to reap the benefits. So it's uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, I've I bought in fully to what the league's hoping to do, and that's ultimately, you know, um, create a soccer industry. You hear Paul Byrne talking all the time about, uh, you know, Canadian soccer business and creating a soccer infrastructure for jobs for players, coaches, uh, media, uh, you know, all these different aspects, uh, business operations, uh, jobs for uh, each of these teams. So uh, the infrastructure and just the impact it's going to have is just has me incredibly excited for the next eight years. As, as someone who's closely observed this, uh, you'll know that there are a lot of cynics out there that, that look at the, the slow crawl towards launch as, as a negative. They say, we want more news. We we, we this we don't believe it until we see it. So what would you say to the cynics out there that they believe that it should have happened yesterday? <laughs> well, I mean, I think you could talk, uh, you know, talk all day about this, Dwayne, and you probably even have a better answer than I do in terms of being patient. You, you've been covering this story, you, you know, I would almost say whistleblower, but you've been you've been breaking news about this league for the last four and a half, you know, four and a half years. Uh, a lot of people were saying that, you were crazy when you were saying, you know, Canada is looking into the Canadian Premier League. This is going to be a thing. This is a thing. And, and finally, now we, uh, we know it to be a thing. I think the thing is, uh, because we've, you know, people have been following you and that information, as this has been a slow trickle, um, we live in an instant gratification um, kind of uh, society right now. In the last 
four, four or three years, it's really sped up. And, and so a lot of people want, you know, really much a knee jerk reaction. And, you know, I can speak to this a lot in terms of the NESL and all the shortcomings of the league, but, um, you know, look no further. The Canadian Premier League doesn't have to look any further than uh, the rush jobs that they did to rush teams like Rayo, KC, and all these teams just to launch and have, have a league right away. And um, I think the slow, calculated approach isn't sexy. It's not impulsive, but it's strategic. And, um, you know, I'm as antsy as anyone else. Uh, you know, I want to get the hit the ground running. And uh, there's a reason why Paul and David and uh, their staff here at the Canadian Premier League are taking this slow, calculated approach because – um, they, they're not trying to, you know, keep it a flow year after year like the NESL is. They're, they're in for the long haul, and um, it might be difficult to swallow for people who are impulsive news junkies, but it's coming. I think we all, all three of us can acknowledge the next couple of months. It's going to start on rolling here, and we're going to start to find out these ownership groups and uh, the stadium venues and, you know, team names and maybe colors. It's, it's coming. It's just uh, it, it, it takes some patience, which is difficult for us these days. When you're looking at the markets in Canada now, Keaton, we have Halifax and Winnipeg that are going mm-hmm. to be in the Canadian Premier League. We have Hamilton. We have other places in this country that are working hard behind the scenes. There's already supporters group, Grand River Union, the Bar, uh, Barton Battalion in uh, mm-hmm. Hamilton. There, there's other across the country. What is your ideal amount of market to start the league next year when it does? Is six, eight, ten, four? Like, uh, what would be for you a realistic ideal number of teams to start the history of this league? Realistically, based on kind of what we're seeing and uh, knowing that it's, uh, you know, we've had a 2019 spring verbalized launch from some of the executives of the Canadian Premier League, we know, um, you know, we're just a little over a year out. So realistically, I think eight teams makes the most sense. I think six sends the message that, you know, it's a Canada wide league with six teams. I, you know, there's already a lot of skeptics, not to say it wouldn't be stable. Those would be six very, like very credible clubs in the, the, the league would say Paul, Paul Byrne really does not want this league to launch with six. I think their target is eight. Um, I would I would like to see eight. You know, I I think ten would be really pushing it. It's it's a lot to you know think about how much the league has to, any league has to go through with MLS or USL welcoming in one or two expansion teams a year. To welcome in six to eight is an incredible task. So I think eight is a good number. It puts you in terms of like uh, comparison to the CFL. Um, that's kind of what I'm explaining to you know. Uh, I'll quote unquote say the non-believer at this point for this league uh, and to kind of point comparisons to maybe the, the not so knowledgeable soccer fan is the CFL model and in terms of size and scope and um, what this league, you know, the league hopes to be a lot more than that, but comparing NFL to CFL. So eight teams I think is realistic, you know, uh, what those markets will be at the end of the day. We know Hamilton, uh, Winnipeg for sure. Uh, Halifax seems like a lock. I think we'd all agree the Ottawa Fury would be would be very shocked if they weren't part of this. Uh, you know, Calgary. It's very clear that they're they're making a lot of moves uh, to position themselves for the Canadian Premier League in year one. Uh, and then we know Rob Friend uh, and the Fraser Valley Group are going to be uh, very much uh, looking to be part of that original uh, eight teams. So I think there's a foundation there. The others will might trickle through. Uh, maybe Saskatoon, Joe Beal and this group up there for original eight, but eight is realistic to me. I don't know what you guys think about that, but yeah, no, it, it truly it feels like eight at least feels like you can cover more of the country, and it feels like a countrywide established league. Maybe it's like you mentioned the the perception of the Canadian Football League, our Canadian Football League, that gives us the impression that eight is kind of viable, and under eight, well, it doesn't happen, and maybe nine, ten in the near future, is there a ceiling? Do you see this Canadian Premier League come up to 20, 22, 24, having teams like, I don't know, like uh, those small markets in like England when we do have teams like Stoke and we have teams like uh, Brighton Old Albion from very small communities performing in the yeah, Premier no, it's League, a, right? It's so, a great, great question, Kevin. It's, it's kind of where my mind 
you know, when we hear uh, once David was announced uh, and once he left Tim Hortons to, to join on as the commissioner of the Canadian Premier League and Paul and Paul as well, uh, Paul Buren, they've both been using the language, both been not shy about talking about uh, looking at promotion relegation long term, uh, to me that just absolutely excites me because I think you know single table, no playoffs, promotion relegation. We've heard that constantly, uh, that language used by them, and they're 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 these guys are smart. They're they're not just saying that to get people excited. Uh, they're not in that kind of business. These aren't they're not these kind of businessmen. They're they're not uh, a circus show. They're very calculating what they do and. Um, I think long term, Kevin, if, you know, Teo and I were actually breaking this down a couple of days ago. I think long term, I like to see the first division capped out at 16 teams. Uh, and then you have a second division at 16, uh, and then potentially have uh, a third division. This is very, very long term at another 16. And so where do I get that number from? Uh, if you look at the CHL and these CHL markets and potential like junior hockey markets that are these mid-major and major cities in Canada that all can sustain a decent level of support for uh, an organized um, professional or semi-professional sport, uh, those markets, there's about 52 Canadian CHL markets, 48 uh, is, you know, um, a bit presumptuous, but if you have 16 and 16, that's 32. 48 puts you at three divisions with 16. I think long term, that's three divisions of 16 is something I could see. I think you know just to get a stable first division with 16 teams would be something they'd really like to take a look at. Uh, anything more than that might be a bit much if they're wanting him to do promotion or relegation in a, a timely fashion. So. I think you have to also understand that they're talking about multi multi team cities, right? So so that would exactly. Sort of- come from that um i always use the you know, my hometown of belleville as, as the option here it's 120,000 people or so the metro area they they have an ahl team right now that averages about 4,000 fans a game so you know that that would be good enough for a d2 i would think so uh, you'd have to convert them to soccer fans and that's another story altogether but we'll leave that yeah, one it is, yeah um that, that's let's talk about the market you're in right now though uh london ontario which you know speaking of junior hockey is a massive junior hockey mar- market is a uh, one of those cities in this country that would be perfect for a D1 situation because uh, it, its size would allow it uh, to sort of compete with the big boys and I think to, to treat this uh, Canadian Premier League as, as a prime sort of um, property in their market if it were to happen there. You know, that's my take on London. What's your take on London as a potential market in the CPL? Yeah, Dwayne, you're spot on, man. I, I you know, I moved from Ottawa. Uh, when I was at the Ottawa Sun, I moved here with my wife um, to London. She's, she's doing her master's right now. And uh, London is like it's a very unique city in Canada. There's not many cities of this size. It's the 12th largest city in Canada. It's somewhere in the middle. Most of these cities in Canada you see hovering around 200,000 or around 500,000 plus. London is about 363,000 people. The greater London area is about comes just under around 500,000. It is the ideal mid-major market, and we've seen this time and time again with. Uh, the London Knights, they punch way above their weight for uh, the, the junior hockey team. They get 9,000 every game. Uh, it's, you know, that's the highest level of uh, sport that the city has. Uh, for the NBL, we have, you know, this, uh, I have a lot of comments on the, the NBL of Canada, the basketball league we have here, uh, but we still get a solid 4,000 people to these games, and it's in a, you know, a very comically run um, Canadian, that's actually uh, pretty good. quote unquote, professional basketball league. So that, it's that's pretty uh, good. Yeah. The, the city is a perfect size uh, for the Canadian Premier League, and you know David Clinton uh, was on the Rob Mike Richards show uh, a couple weeks ago promoting the Canadian Premier League, and the only city that Mike Richards uh, mentioned and talked about that came to his mind was London, Ontario. So uh, I think it's. You know, I, I, I'm very certain the league is really interested in coming here eventually. Uh, it's just about finding the right local ownership, and that's what I've noticed here is it's going to be tricky for them to find that right local owner. Uh, fair, fair enough. I, I talked about my, my 
hometown, my true hometown a minute ago. I, I kind of have a second hometown that because I went to university in Kitchener, Waterloo, um, which is just up the road from, from London and also a similar mm-hmm. size market. Uh, the reason I, I bring it up is because I, I could imagine a Canadian Premier League derby match between Kitchener and London. They have a great rivalry in junior hockey. I, I could imagine sort of fans driving up the 401 or driving down the 401 to go to that match and it being being a big thing. How important do you think rivalries and sort of having that local sort of aspect, ability to get to games is to the to the ultimate success of the Canadian Premier League? It, it hinges on it. It absolutely hinges on it, Dwayne. And uh, from my conversations with Paul, uh, you know, he, he has a grandiose vision of what this league will become. And you, you hinted at it with multiple teams in multiple cities. You know, he really um, has a vision of what Toronto can become. And I think we're seeing that with all the different supporters groups popping up. Um, you have, you know, potentially a team in Mississauga, a team in uh, North York, and then maybe a downtown Toronto team, maybe a Scarborough team, a Brampton team. All these other cities uh, around the GTA have an identity, and I think that will uh, really add to that local derby feel. In terms of southwestern Ontario, uh, the proximity between Hamilton to London, an hour and a half, Kitchener-Waterloo to London, an hour, and then an hour in between Hamilton to Kitchener-Waterloo, to form that kind of triangle is integral to the league success. So, uh, you know, you, you see there's a really good support happening down in uh, Kitchener Waterloo with the Grand River Union and um, what they're doing there for KW United. It seems that that ownership group is fully focused on uh, trying to secure a Canadian Premier League um, team now. They've left the PDL and they're on hiatus for that. And uh, Stuart, Stuart Neely, who used to run the academy program for Toronto FC, uh, he, he tweeted, uh, you know, one day can you imagine a Kitchener Waterloo uh, London Derby and the Canadian Premier League, and that really got me excited. And I, you know, I'm buying into that idea as this league is going to live and die by those local rivalries, and I think they know that, and they're really trying to, to tap into that proximity because the issue right now is distance and the size of our country, and we have to uh, take that disadvantage and turn it into an advantage by having a, a lot more uh, proximity rivalries that this league will flourish with. I I have an, a vision in my mind, and I, I've heard a few. Uh, people involved with the CPL talking about this is pockets of teams. You can have the Southern Ontario pocket with the Toronto region. Then you have the Ottawa region where you have Ottawa and maybe some a team in Gatineau and you have a two solid dudes I derby hope right Gadno there. Gets one. Right? You have a two solid dudes derby right there. The, just across the across the river derby here. Or you have the Rideau, the Rideau derby. That would be the Rideau derby. But, you know, the one thing we're not hearing a lot so far is team in the province of Quebec. There's interest in Quebec City. In the Montreal region, it would be a bit difficult with the impact really owning the footprint of soccer basically around here. What is your thought on a potential Quebec Canadian Premier League team? Could it be in Quebec City? Does it need to be in Quebec City? Do you need more than one to create those pockets of rivalries? Example, Montreal, Quebec will be tough to do just because Montreal, but... Trois-Rivières and Quebec could both have a team and have a rivalry right there. What is your thoughts on the Canadian Premier League in Quebec? I think it's crucial, Kevin. Like, I, I think there's two things. When, early on, when I, you know, I'm a, I'm a digger, and I love scouring and, and trying to, to, you know, connect the dots in terms of what's happening with not only this league but the USL and just trying to find those, um, you know, uh, read between the lines to, to be able to break news and uh, to figure out what's happening in terms of the soccer landscape. I thought originally with the lack of Quebec news, it might have just been something that was lost in translation. Maybe I'm not following the right people. I can't really read French. So, like, is, you know, is there news and is there movement happening in Quebec about the Canadian Premier League? Uh, you know, since then, I've really realized that you're right. It, there's literally just not that much uh, movement and buzz um, happening in the, the province of Quebec. And, uh, you know, personally, I would, I think it's absolutely vital that the Canadian Premier League is in Quebec City. I think it's beyond even London or uh, I would think it's, it's you know, it's, it's as vital as Hamilton. It's the ideal, m- like, mid-major city in Canada. It's a perfect size. Uh, the sports calendar in the summer is wide open. It, it, there's a lot of um, recipes for success in that city for the community to really rally around uh, a Canadian Premier League team. It would be able to give uh, Quebecers uh, in Quebec City a, a national stage to to, to really vocalize and to, to, to tribalize in a positive way. That's 
what is going to be beautiful with this league is it's going to not create division, but it's going to allow um, each community and culture within this country to come together under the umbrella of soccer and to, to really, um, you know, showcase what makes their culture and this South Pocket kind of unique. Uh, I really hope that the Canadian Premier League uh, gives Quebec the stage it needs uh, to be able to have that coming out party, be able to have that Gadno Ottawa Derby, uh, to have that Quebec City team, to have multiple teams in Quebec, because it's not going to be a Canadian Premier League unless it has that French Canadian flavor, and that's just my opinion. It, it, it's going to make it what it is. No, it, it's it is, and you want something to be representative of the whole country, and the entire cultures of this country too, and having a team in Quebec, in Quebec City, will, will make a big difference. And there is some history of success in the sport of soccer in Quebec City. Just think of the Royal de Beaupas, which one is the oldest uh, organization and team in soccer in this country. And other brands like that one that existed. There's a Dynamo right now in the PLSU and there's other potential gr owner group and there's money. And you mentioned the sports calendar. It's not just wide open in the summer. It's wide open year round pretty much right now with the lack of professional sports teams in Quebec City. But but there's that appetite. And if you use mm -hmm. that aspect of, you know what, the Nordiques are not coming back next year, not the year after, and not in probably ever. So how about you cheer for some soccer? It's brilliant. Like I mean, the CF, there's always been those rumblings of the CFL team there. The, the, the beauty of the Canadian Premier League is the buy-in is going to be so much more reasonable than a CFL franchise that um, it's not going to be, you know, a knee-jerk reaction, but it can be still a calculated and a lot more quickly and efficient um, turnaround as opposed to, uh, you know, a quite rigorous uh, stadium requirements for a CFL team uh, that, you know, we'd see in Halifax and, and maybe Quebec City might be able to unlock and launch and, um, have a kind of a turnkey operation with a Canadian Premier League team that, you know, we to really resonate with. Uh, I, I honestly think, especially with the the aftermath of this whole Nordiques um, blow up uh, and that arena being built and, you know, a junior hockey team playing in it currently and uh, one of the best NHL size arenas in, in North America and there's not an NHL team there, I, I'd really like to think that the Canadian Premier League would be able to take advantage of that, that sore eye in that city. Thank you very much, Keaton, for your time. Uh, today, you can listen to Keaton now on the Two Solitudes Canadian Premier League podcast starting next week for our patrons only. So if you want to make sure to not miss Keaton, myself, and Dwayne talk about the Canadian Premier League to use our vast experience of uh, well, five, five years for me, over a decade for Dwayne, and uh, almost a decade for Keaton as well of covering soccer in this country, make sure you subscribe, take the pledge, $2 a month will be the threshold to make sure you can listen to Two Solitudes Canadian Premier League podcast. Go to patreon.com. That's P A T R E O N.com slash sports podcasting network and make sure you take that dive. Keaton, again, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate the time, guys. Congrats on the thousand podcast as well, doing. And we'll. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. You are listening to Soccer Today. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Today SPN and like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sports podcasting network. You can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcast. Well, that was fun. You know, it's always fun, Dwayne, to. Uh... To add new colleagues and collaborators to the network, and I've always been a fan of Keaton and his professionalism and his work ethic and his uh, networks of contacts, and the guy, he's a nice guy, so I'm really happy to have Keaton on board. No, of, of course, yeah, and, and obviously uh, interesting to get the perspective of someone uh, down in southwestern Ontario, which is a region I don't think that outside of Ontario gets thought of a lot because it's sort of, you know, it's Toronto dwarfs everything in the yeah. province. Obviously, when people think of Ontario, they just think of Toronto, um, either in positive or negative light, depending on, on your perspective of the city. But uh, but there's a lot of population to the southwest. Kitchener-Waterloo, 
Um, the Waterloo region is about a million people. London is about a half million people in terms of the sort of the, the umbrella that they would go draw from. So these are massive markets for a Canadian Premier League and and we shouldn't ignore them. And I think that they would be key markets to a Canadian Premier League, as Keaton said there, uh, particularly when you get into the rivalry. You could add Windsor to that mix too, which could draw potentially, uh, you know, even a few fans over from, from Detroit as well. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of potential down there. And, it, and it, it, I think it's a key population rich area of the country that that is underserved by professional sports as well. Yeah, we're just talking here. We have like a five minutes left. So, uh, yes, there's the England and Italy. We'll, we'll continue to talk about this in a second. But but I was thinking you mentioned Windsor, Windsor. You know what? It, it rang a bell in my mind. I'm like, OK, yeah, it's proximity to Detroit. OK, I'm putting myself five, ten years down the road. Uh, we all know the history of the CFL and how. A few teams in the United States almost killed this league in the mid-90s and uh, how the Baltimore Stallions came to become the Montreal Alouettes. Is there a risk in the future if this thing is popular here that cities, markets close to the border will want to come and uh, have uh, some piece of our cake? And what should we do when that happens? I.e., should we let the Baltimore Stallions come into the CFL CPL version? Well, Stephen Sandor reported uh, last week that, that they've already approached them. That, in fact, it wasn't named, but the New York Cosmos were thought to be uh, one of the teams that reached out to the Canadian Premier League as a potential place for them to play. Um, and, uh, you know, currently they turned it down, which was the right choice at this particular time. Well, you can't no launch cost. a Canadian Premier League, emphasis on the Canadian, with American teams. It's just silly. No um, Cosmos. I, I'm sorry, Tristan, but the Cosmos does not belong in the CPL. Yeah, no, it... it no, no, just no is the answer to that. And, you know, I was had an argument with, with a Cosmos supporter online the other day was accused us of thinking small by rejecting them. You know, it's like thinking sensibly, but nonetheless, um, look, way down the line, uh, once the, it's established in pretty much any market in Canada, which which has it, I, I could see the possibility of allowing a Buffalo or a Detroit or um maybe somewhere in the west i'm thinking yeah, trying to like off the top of my head that uh, somewhere in or just North like a cone or something i don't know whatever yeah or like somewhere a that has, or so go ahead, Gavin. just like a plattsburgh or albany like those cities that are one to two to three hour border cities maybe but then you lose the sea of the campiel you lose the canadian aspect you lose yeah i don't know it's the, just a thought experiment that i was uh it was popping into my mind when you mentioned windsor I'm like yeah detroit <laughs> What if Detroit wants a team? Do you say yes? Do you say, okay, well, maybe we have an influx of uh, American money into the Canadian Premier League and we can have uh, more teams or more budget? I don't know. It's it, it's a it, it's a nice thought to, to, to experiment with. Well, you know, look here. If Detroit City, the, the current team right now, the, the fourth division team in the U.S., or third, I guess, because they don't have a... Yeah, well, you know what I mean. No more it gets confusing. Yeah. Um, if they were to, to say that they want to put a team in, I'd say that's fine. You can operate a team, but it has to be in Windsor. I mean, you got to have a Canadian aspect to this. As I said, way down the line, perhaps, but it would be a limited thing and it would have to abide by any rules that, you know, sort of uh, that related to Canadian players and quotas and things like that. And and that's one of the problems I had with the CFL expansion in the States is that they waived all the, the domestic rules. They allowed them to play unlimited American players, which, of course, Baltimore then became the <laughs> champion pretty quickly because they didn't have to to deal with the Canadian import rule, which is like one of the things that makes the Canadian Football League, you know, there's haters out there for this, but I, as a football observer, I don't know if I'm a fan anymore so yeah. much as an observer. Too um, many concussions. Enjoy. That's what I find. Yeah, 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 the concussions have kind of killed me in, uh, as well as sort of the criminality of some, some of the players through the years, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, uh, that thing makes it unique, and you'd have to abide by those rules or I, I'd have no part of this. Um, the what you said though the question you asked him and I, I'm glad you asked because I had it sort of written down as if you didn't get to it I was going to come in with another one was the Quebec question is the big one for me they they need to have a French presence in this league uh, ideally in Quebec you know it, Ottawa is an absolute necessary uh, necessary requirement that there's, so there's at least some quasi French yeah. in the league but you, but you, yeah they need a Quebec team you cannot have the Canadian Premier League in this country and have no team in the national nation's capital and on top of it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak in terms that David Clanagan and the and Paul Byrne of this world can understand. In the industry world, in the business world, there's a lot of businesses that are French speaking, that are big corporations actually in Canada here that are based around here. Some of them have been sold recently, but I don't care if Cara's the owner, Saint Hubert, this is Quebecois for me. 
and St. Hubert on a jersey will look a lot more better in Quebec than in Toronto because Swiss Chalet is taken over in Toronto and it's not St. Hubert. You know what I mean? So if you want to have sponsors like St. Hubert, sponsors like Kustal, sponsors like big national, when I say national, I mean in the province of Quebec, that are big brands, like even restaurants that are not even in the region of Montreal, and that's what a lot of people forget, is Montreal is like a microcosm. It is in the province of Quebec, but it's not the province of Quebec. You go to Quebec City, it's totally different. I want to see the Restaurant Normandin brand, the Quebec City team. Uh, anything that works like this, local, uh, when I say local, I mean it could be provincial, but different type of companies blue chip for canadian companies like the saint hubert you go to toronto it'll be smokes poutinery you come here it'll be a uh, uh, another one those type of, of big companies in inter province could help quebec have a team example and you want to have that you want to have that possibility of national sponsors and with cara corporation example it's a big owners of different restaurant brands in this country, Swiss Chalet, Kelsey's, Harvey's, St. Hubert, and so on and so forth. Example, the league-wide sponsorship in Quebec, it'll be St. Hubert. In Toronto, it's Milestones, and you put Montana's over there. Those make sense, and you kind of need the unity of this country for that, and you need Quebec City for that. No, what's the name of the gentleman that uh, operates the Laval football team? He has a furniture store, does he not? Yeah, Tange. Uh, he is the owner of the Rougéard uh, Versailles Laval's football team. He has a furniture store, high-end furniture store across the province, especially in the region of Quebec. And he is the owner of the Rimouski Pionnier, which is a uh, a uh, college football team as well one cjep team so one level below university and he's the owner of that too he's the owner of the Qua quebec Rampart with patrick Qua as well so he has that hockey team in uh, quebec city so yeah of course if you go see tange and you show him a look we can make your stores uh, another uh, another imprint where you can sell more stores how about you open a few stores in southern ontario and you sponsor your quebec city team and you have some sponsors on the board and guess what your footprint enlarges and i think that's that's the type of way you have to look at this you know for precisely we're a little tight in time so we'll wrap it up quick but i i think ideally in the model of this league that they're they're talking about would allow not just for you know we shouldn't just think in terms of like the nhl or whatever where you have a ah, quebec team you have a quebec city team and you have this team as i said there's multiple options here i think ideally you'd want to have a team that represents acadians that represents quebecois that represents the ottawa valley that represents even french-speaking individuals in the west a winnipeg french team like that would be ideal way down the line but uh, we definitely need some french presence in this league the acadian team kind of excites me that would be a passionately supported even if uh, the numbers are a little small there i think because the acadian people are very proud um so yeah that, that excites me and this all excites me because it's exciting kevin and we're gonna do a show about it soon and why don't you tell people about it one more time before we say goodbye patreon.com slash sports podcast network starting next week our first episode of the two solid tunes canadian premier league podcast will be recorded next week you can expect a show that won't be live it'll be pre-recorded with Dwayne keaton and i for high quality audio we want you to enjoy this show we ask you to pay, take a bit of money take a loony maybe two loonies one toony out of your uh, PayPal account and put it on our Patreon to access this show, but make sure you will not regret it. You will, it will be the first official Canadian, well, it's not official with the league, but it's official on the network here, and it will be the first dedicated podcast to the Canadian Premier League starting next week. Uh, we will put our entire experience in this podcast quality, and you will have a great network of contacts, collaborators, interviews, anything that you expect from the work Dwayne and I have been doing over the years will be done to focus on the Canadian Premier League once a week or once every two weeks, whenever is necessary. The Two Solid Dudes, the Canadian Premier League podcast will come out for patrons only and make sure you get into the Patreon queue before next week where we will drop our first episode. So go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash sports podcast and network take the pledge support independent soccer journalism 
And as always, you can follow Dwayne on Twitter at 24th Minute and myself at Kev Laramie. You can follow Keaton Robbins, uh, collaborator on the network at Keaton underscore Robbins. And as always, until tomorrow, it's our World Cup Today debut tomorrow. We'll be previewing, at least starting to preview, the upcoming World Cup. And until then, have a great soccer. You can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcast. <laughs>